Let me bring you some breaking news. An Al Jazeera correspondent has been shot by Israeli forces. We understand that she's been killed. Sharin Abu Akhla was working in Palestine. She was a veteran correspondent for many years. We understand it's happened in Jenin, in the occupied West Bank. Let's go to Nida Ibrahim, who's joining us on the phone. Nida, what more can you tell us? What we know for now is the Palestinian Health Ministry has announced her death after Shirin al Aqla, who was, has been covering uh, the events unfolding in Jenin, specifically an Israeli raid to the city in the north of the occupied West Bank, where she was hit by a bullet to the head. She was transferred to the hospital. Our colleague and producer, Rania, has been in touch with the hospital before the announcement of the death. The medical team told her that she had a very, very slim chance and unfortunately, we just got the news from the Palestinian Health Ministry announcing her death. As you can imagine, this is it gave us a shock to the journalists who are who have been working with her. She's a very well respected journalist. She's been covering the Palestinian story for years and years now. Since the um, she has joined Al Jazeera since the beginning of the second intifada. She's been covering on the news. And we are now very shocked, very sad, but this is the reality of Palestinian journalists covering the news. That unfortunately, they find themselves part of the story. Nida, I understand, of course, that this is a... Forgive me for interrupting you, Nida, but I do, of course, understand, we all do understand that this is a very difficult moment for you and the team there. Are you able to tell us any more about the circumstances under which this happened? To be honest, Rob, I've seen a few videos. I couldn't continue watching them. As you can imagine, this is difficult. I've seen her shot in the head. That's all I've seen. I don't know the circumstances. I'm not sure where she was standing at the time. We're trying to uh, leave the journey now to try and cover from there. But unfortunately, what we know at the moment is very little. Uh, the circumstances under which events like this have happened before, um, do, that, do we know what the procedure okay. will be from say, the Israeli forces or the Palestinian organizations? Will there be some sort of investigation? As it happens with a lot of Palestinians, um, journalists or not journalists, the Israeli army often announces that it's investigating, that it's looking into stories. But as many Palestinians will tell you, that a lot, if not all, that in the Palestinian Authority by the uh, Israeli forces fire go unindicted that they believe, Palestinians believe that people are not going to be held accountable for what's going on. It's, it's not something that is limited to journalists, to Palestinians. I'm sorry, I'm just out of words, but there is Muslims that Palestinians believe will provide justice to them in these cases. Nida, if you can, bring us up to date with the situation that has been going on between Israel and Palestinians in the last few weeks, particularly, of course, for viewers who are just joining us and may not be aware of what's been happening. So, Jeanine has been the epicenter of the current Israeli escalation. It has intensified, the Israeli raids have intensified recently on Jenin after, uh, and, in, and all across the occupied West Bank, after a series of attacks that have targeted Israelis inside Israel and uh, in some illegal Israeli settlements across the occupied West Bank. But... The Israeli escalation has been ongoing for years. The Israeli raids, the killing of Palestinian uh, uh, young men and women 
uh, by Israeli forces or by Israeli settlers living in the West Bank. So this is not something that has been limited to just the past few weeks. But we've been seeing more and more Palestinians in the Jenin area carrying weapons, weapons, saying that they want to fight the Israeli army when they raid the cities uh, of Jenin. So we often uh, see armed clashes uh, in suit between the Palestinian fighters and the Israeli army. So, if, so the, pl the place where the escalation has been intensifying is the Jenin area. And we've been speaking to a lot of young Palestinians there who are saying that they don't believe that they have hope for a political horizon, for a future. And this is why they're fighting Israel. They're telling us that this is the only option that Israel has left with. And Shireen has been covering extensively on that story. We've been uh, meeting with her during our coverage in Jenin. Even just yesterday, she commented on a picture of us and said, come to Jenin, uh, uh, cover with us. So I, I, it's, it's just words escape me. Uh, Nita, just stay with me for a second. I just want to uh, inform viewers who may just be uh, joining us that we are getting reports that an Al Jazeera correspondent, Shirin Abu Akhla, who's working in Palestine in Jenin in the occupied West Bank, has been killed after being shot by uh, Israeli forces. Uh, Nida, just give us some indication, if you can, of the kind of conditions that journalists covering the situation are facing on a regular basis. So it's important to highlight that Palestinian journalists are not only shot or hit because they're just there. They are often targeted, and we see it when we cover protests or when we go to places, that sometimes the Israeli army specifically shoots at journalists because part of what we do is uncover the crimes or the attacks or whatever the Israeli army doesn't want to be put out on air. So when you talk to lots of Palestinian journalists, they, they would show you injuries. They would show you uh, where they've been shot by Israeli forces fire or by illegal Israeli settlers. So the circumstances that Palestinian journalists are living under are not so different from the rest of their people. And remember, the Palestinians are covering a story that is theirs, that is very personal to them. And, and this is sometimes we cover a story that we know the person who was shot and killed. So they are part of the story and they are part of unfolding and uncovering what is happening in the occupied territory. Nida, is there any effort? that can be made by, on behalf of, on, by organizations on behalf of Palestinian journalists who are covering this situation to try to protect them? Or is there a limit to what can be done? That's the thing. You are talking about a powerful uh, uh, military occupation that has been targeting journalists for years. So it's important talk about the story, it's important to keep highlighting those violations, but as long as we don't see people or, or soldiers or perpetrators being brought to justice for what they do, we're not looking at an end to this series of killing journalists or, or, or them being shot or them being injured. So what passing is what? Justice. It, they want the world to know what the Israeli uh, uh, government, the Israeli military, the Israeli settlers are doing to them. But if the messenger is being shot, you can imagine the situation of the rest of the people. Mm -hmm. Nida, thank you very much. Stay with me, please. We've just been watching pictures of Shireen uh, reporting from uh, Palestine and uh, other parts of the area as you've been talking. 
For viewers who are just joining us, we're getting reports that Al Jazeera correspondent Shirina Abu Akhle has been killed after being shot by Israeli forces in Jenin, in the occupied West Bank. I want to go to our correspondent, Stephanie Decker, who has been working in the, in the West Bank, in West Jerusalem particularly. Stephanie, give us some context, please. Clearly, this is a significant blow uh, to the teams who have been working uh, in the area. You have been working there for the last few weeks. Tell us your experiences, your uh, impressions, if you like, of what it's like to be working in that environment? Well, I mean, I haven't uh, actually been in Janine in the last couple of weeks because Anida, uh, our West Bank correspondent, has been covering um, what's been going on there, but I've been covering this region for around 16 years. So, you know, we're well versed in, in, in how these things go. And um, in terms of context, there have been... Uh, Israeli army raids on the Janine refugee camp. It's an area uh, where you do have, and you know, the West Bank, you don't usually see guns on the streets. And, the, uh, and this area does have, you know, armed men. So this is what the army has been doing um, in the last couple of weeks, particularly May, also um, targeting what it says were men and uh, people involved with. Uh, you know, men who carried out attacks inside Israel. Also, last Thursday, you had an attack uh, from two men who came from not particular Jenin, but um, but from Rumana, which is a village close to Jenin. They carried out an attack in the central city of Elad. So uh, the army, uh, and in recent days, the Israeli media and the establishment here has been talking about Another major clampdown, if you will, in Janine. They've been um, weighing up two options uh, with the military advisors, uh, whether Janine or Gaza, because uh, they wanted to respond to what you've had, like now six or seven attacks within Israel. Having said all that, um, the security establishment here has maintained that these attacks are carried out by individuals, not particularly uh, have any group backing, factional backing, if you will. Uh, but you have had an increased rhetoric uh, from Palestinian Islamic Jihad, uh, also Hamas. And you do have elements um, of these in the camp. But, of course, you know, going back to operating as a journalist, particularly in the occupied West Bank, during these kinds of raids, um, it's very difficult. And, you know, as you heard Nida say that, uh, people, we wear press vests. Uh, clearly marked, um, and the teams had been there. And this this morning was a raid that has been carried. They have been carrying out these out. This wasn't a major, major operation in the sense of what I just described to you has been debated here whether that's going to start. So it's um, it, it's tragic. Uh, I think we're all still in in, in disbelief. You said of, uh, right at the start that you've been covering the region for about 16 years. Is it your impression that there is uh, th that Palestinian journalists who are covering this conflict are treated or regarded differently by the Israeli forces uh, to, in comparison to, say, journalists who are moved in from other areas to cover the conflict, or is there a, a, are all journalists essentially regarded in a particular way by Israeli forces? I think you make a valid point. I think for sure. I think there is a, a you know, how, how would I describe it? A hierarchy, perhaps? I mean, yes, all journalists can be targeted by Israeli forces, but certainly it's, it's absolutely valid to say Palestinian journalists who, as Nida also says, this is their lives, right? This is their story. They're covering their backyard. They're covering something that happens to them and their people. Um, it's very different. And yes, there seems to be more of a... Um, of a, a how would I say, open, uh, you know, open book when it comes to targeting them or, and there's little accountability, you know, whether it's at protests, whether it's, you know, you know raids like this. Um, there doesn't, there isn't an element of, let's say, journalistic, um, you know, that you don't, you don't touch journalists because they're there. The Israeli army and the Israeli border police will very often target journalists to, you know, to disperse them. I mean, I, I've been part of that. And again, I'm a foreign journalist. You know, I've been coming here for years, but I come in and out. Um, 
And I think there is an element of discrepancy about whether you're a Palestinian journalist or you're a foreign journalist. But at the same time, you know, they do hit anyone. I mean, Gaza border protests, you know, they would chase us down with a, with a tear gas drone actively. We'd actually run away from the drone, which would follow you. I've had colleagues have tear gas drop on their heads because they weren't aware it was hovering above them. Journalists can be shot at. Journalists can be targeted with, you know, uh, today, tragically, it's live fire, but, you know, tear gas canisters, sun grenades, uh, you know, these sort of sponge bullets they use, but that can really maim and injure too. Yes, absolutely. Um, particularly, you know, when you're all gathered in a certain area. So this is something that is not new. Um, it, it's not surprising. The, the, the outcome is tragically unnecessary, what has happened today with Shireen. I, I, everyone is just like, why? You know, why Why has this happened? There was no reason for this to, ha- to happen. Um, so, so yes, uh, yes, the Israeli army and I, and I, I, we haven't had a response yet. Uh, but this is something that, you know, uh, like Nida said, there's there's very little accountability. But this is this is a tragedy on a scale that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. But yes, in my experience, absolutely, the the military targets, the border police targets, and more so uh, more so Palestinian journalists. Absolutely, I think that's a very valid valid. Uh, and a statement. Steph, stay with me for a second. I just want to tell viewers who are just joining us that uh, we're getting reports that an Al Jazeera correspondent, Shirina Abu Akhla, who's working in Jenin in the occupied West Bank, has died after being shot by Israeli forces. Details are still fairly scarce, as you can imagine at the moment. We're talking to our correspondents, Nida Ibrahim and Stephanie Decker, who've been working uh, in the region. Um, Stephanie, with regard to what Nida had referred to in terms of a follow-up to this, in terms of an investigation, she was giving me the impression that there wasn't a lot of confidence that there would be accountability at the end of this. What is your interpretation as somebody who's covered the region for 16 years? and has seen events like this in the past. What's your interpretation of what the process is likely to be? Well, I think, you know, what, what is what is accountability for someone who's lost their life, right? What is the accountability for the family? Like, is it an apology? Is it, you know, I, 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 don't, I, I don't see how any of that... Um, I mean, if I look at... If we look at facts on the ground, you know, journalists have been killed in the past. Uh, many years ago, you had a British activist uh, Rachel Carr, she was killed by the army many, many years ago. Um, there's an investigation. You know, what is the accountability? Uh, I think what journalists want is for the, the methods of operating to change, is for them to be safe, to be able to do their job, uh, to be able to, to be in, you know, a relatively safe, of course, when there's military confrontations, things are tense. I mean, we know this, and, and journalists, you know, you take measured risks on the ground, and particularly here. You know, when, if you are a Palestinian journalist or you've been coming here for years, you understand a bit of the language of the ground. You, you, you know how to operate. You know that you stay behind certain areas, that you don't go in the middle of, a, you know, of an active... Like, we know these things, but, of course, you know, things on the ground change, and they change very quickly. And I think, at the end of the day, what people want, what accountability should be, is that, you know, journalists should not be actively targeted. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, you know, we should be able to do our job. The problem is these days, it sounds like a simple request, but it's, it, 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 it's not. It's not anymore. You are actively targeted because you are a journalist. Like Nita mentioned there, you know, they don't want you to see things. They don't want you to cover something. So, you know, so they will they will try to disperse you, whether that is with whatever means they use. The problem that you mean is that it's an extra level of, of dangerous because the, you have the army there. It is tense. You have armed men in the camps, which is what the army is clamping down on. So you start having, you know, what are almost like mini pockets of an active war zone. Um, and I don't know the exact details of today, but certainly the initial report is that they were shot at uh, by the army wearing press vests. Um, I, I don't know any more details than that. But, uh, you know, accountability, I, I, I don't see... What could be accounted, you know, what could, like, is it an apology? Is there going to be investigated? Are they not? This is just the way, unfortunately, that things go on the ground here. And and accountability is, is, is rare. Uh, you know, I, I don't see what could, you know, what could come out of this. That You know, what are they going to say? They made a mistake. 
at this point, you know, Shadi was gone. Uh, it's, um, yeah, it, it, at, at the end of the day, journalists should not be targeted. Uh, and and I don't think that's going to change. Stephanie, for now, thank you very much indeed. We've just been seeing pictures as you've been talking of Shireen uh, doing her work in, in, in the area. I want to bring in uh, again Nida Ibrahim. Now, Nida, I understand, of course, that you and the team have been working very closely with Shireen uh, Abu Akhle. Tell me, if you can, um, how this it will affect the way that you choose to cover the situation uh, in uh, the, between Israel and Palestine, if indeed it will affect it at all. How do you make a decision to go forward after an incident like this? Virgin and Jazeera, Arabic, say, my mom learned of the news. Uh, Nita, forgive, please forgive me for interrupting you because unfortunately the signal that we're getting at the moment is not a clear one. I want to go back to, to Stephanie Decker. I want to, to Steph, to, to ask you the same question. Clearly this is a significant, but it is always a blow when somebody dies under any circumstances in any sort of conflict. But when it comes to being a journalist, how do you move forward? How do the teams move forward from this? What's the process? Do you, do you stock, uh, take stock and do you rethink the way that you cover uh, a situation like this? I think, I, I don't think it's going to change how we operate. I think this is not going to make us stop uh, covering these kinds of things. Uh, again, like I don't know the exact details of, of, of how this happened. But, you know, we, like I said, you know, we, we take measured risks and, uh, and often, you know, people even at headquarters don't even know what, what, that, what that's involved. You know, we're on the ground, things change constantly. Um, and, and we try and just understand the ground and read the ground and stay within, you know, within a, a measured half safe area of operating to be able to cover something. But like as anything on the ground, you know, things are fine until they're not. And that happens immediately. And that's just something that we're also aware of. And you try to measure that as, as, as you know, as well as you can. And, and of course, you know, this is, a, this is also a story, whether it's here, whether it's somewhere else, you know, to understand the ground is important. And Palestinian journalists, of course, know the ground. This is their home. This is, you know, like Nida was saying, they've been covering the success. Shireen, is, she's been sleeping there. You know, they've been staying there. They know the ground. They know the streets. They have contacts. They, they, you couldn't be, um, how should I say, you couldn't be better prepared than they are. It's not a foreign team that has never been there, that have flown in, you know, and that, that have been there a week. No, you are talking about veteran journalists, Palestinian journalists, from the area who have been there years in, years out, who've covered the story, who've lived the story, who know the ground, who know how to operate. Um, and this, is, I think, is the, is the lesson out of this, right? It's like, it's not uh, gung-ho people who don't understand. No, these are people who couldn't know the story better uh, and the ground better. Uh, and, this is, and this is what tragically happened. I don't think it's going to change the way we operate. Um, but it highlights just how difficult I think it is for journalists to do their job. Um, and again, like I don't know the details exactly of how this happened today. It is, of course, a tense area. You have Palestinian gunmen. You have the Israeli military. It is tense. Um, there is live fire. From what I understood, there was an exchange of fire also with, 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 with gunmen in the camp, with the army. So again, I don't know all the specifics, but... You know, uh, it's one of those things. This is this is a veteran team. This is a team that's been covered. They're from, you know, the occupied West Bank. They covered Jenin extensively. Um, they couldn't have been better informed in terms of how to operate on the ground. Mm. Stephanie, for now, thank you very much indeed.